Lily and her rangers leave the agricultural center. After about an hour's march north along the foot of the mountains, we reach the Guardian Citadel, a huge black structure carved into the side of a mountain. Lily knows the Guardians to be strange collectors of old items and as xenophobic fools who would not hesitate to kill strangers without ever seeing the whites of their eyes. She guesses that the flags are in place to mark the closest an outsider may approach the walls without being attacked. Vorla adjusts her glasses, trying to see the top of the walls that arch high over us like frozen waves. Lily gets the distinct impression that this place is very well defended. As we approach closer, defender on the wall yells, Leave, wasteland scum. You were not old enough to die here. This close to the citadel, Lily realizes we've not got the armor it would take to survive an assault on this place. Another look at those black obsidian walls also tells her that we don't have the weapons to crack this nut yet. Okay, a not-so-subtle hint from the game that we're simply not ready for this place. It's certainly on Lily's list, though. There's likely some useful equipment inside she'd like to commandeer for her squad. We'll be back. A half-hour march east across the desert, and we reach the Desert Nomad's Camp. We come upon the Desert Nomad's Camp. Ornery-looking longhorn cattle wander among dusty tents from which sullen faces appear. In the background, a ramshackle collection of railroad cars attached with wood, hide, and an odd piece of corrugated aluminum sits on a rail siding. Two of the cars, the locomotive at the front and the caboose at the rear, appear to be in better condition than the others. As we approach, a strained silence falls over the camp and Rosie grows uncomfortable under the collective gaze of the assembled nomads. Finally, one of the nomads steps forward. Welcome, rangers. I am the brakeman of this train. I'd be honored if you would visit with me in the caboose before leaving our camp. In the meantime, please accept our hospitality. The brakeman turns and strides back into the camp. The nomads seem nice enough. What's that behind us? Three rail raiders at 14 feet. Are these nomads or marauders raiding the camp? Lily makes an impact on one with her crowbar, but the other two get away. They're back for more. Two rail raiders at 14 feet. Rosie guts one, and the other runs away. He's back! One rail raider at 14 feet. Lily plants a 45 slug into his tiny raider brain. There's more behind us? Three dire coyotes at 14 feet. Friends of Rex? Lily plugs the last one with the 45, but not before Rosie falls unconscious. There's even more behind us? One gila monitor at 14 feet. Boy, is this guy tough. Lily'd love to own a jacket made out of Gila Monitor hide. Ain't gonna happen today. We approach the locomotive at the front of the train, looking for the brakeman. As we board the locomotive, we're met by a short but solid-looking fellow. He's dressed in garishly striped overalls and wears a rather battered and much-patched engineer's cap. Greetings. I am the engineer of this train. The engineer makes a sweeping gesture that encompasses the entire camp. I hope your stay with us will be a pleasant one. The engineer smiles and asks how he may be of assistance. Lily asks about the brakeman. The engineer looks unhappy. Unfortunately, we've been burdened by a fool for a brakeman. He insists on dabbling in arcane matters. He actually suggested that we use an engine instead of cattle to pull the train. The idiot will bring the wrath of the gods down upon us yet. Using an engine sounds logical to Lily. Maybe they're just out of gas. She asks about engine parts. What? Mr. Jumbo? What? Maybe we'll have better luck at the other end of the train. We make our way to the back of the train. As we pass the open doorway of a car, Lily's almost overcome by the strong odor of fermented cactus fruit. As her eyes become accustomed to the darkness of the car, she can make out a straw-covered floor littered with numerous bottles of Dr. B. Bilius Balfour's Snake Squeezins. At the back of the car rolls a rotund bearded figure rocking back and forth, as if the mere act of sitting offered a difficult feat of balance. Finally, seeming to take notice of us, the shadowy figure issues an invitation. Welcome to my humble abode, gentle folk. Step on in. Okay, so Varla was wrong. Snake squeezins isn't anti-venom, it's booze. Varla shrugs. Lily might see if this hobo can entertain us later, but right now she wants to give her squad a break. The brakeman offered his hospitality. We reach the caboose. The brakeman meets us at the door. 
He thanks us for heeding his invitation, and he has a message for Lily to deliver to the head crusher in Quartz. Lily actually hopes to resupply in Quartz, so she accepts. Not to mention, she'd like to see what that message might be. More evidence for her investigation. The Brakeman tells Lily, take this Visa card and give it to the head crusher in Quartz. As the Brakeman passes Lily the card, the sunlight catches the Dove hologram and glints brightly. She slides it into her breast pocket as he turns and leaves without another word. A Visa card surely can't have any value after the war. But even Lily's cryptology training is not enough to discern what the Dove hologram might symbolize. We'll have to speak with the head crusher to find out what it might be about. After a bit of rest, we return to the hobo. Lily's curious if he might spill some sensitive information relevant to her investigation of the desert nomads. Enter and be enlightened, hiccuping, and amazed by the wisdom of the hobo, hiccuping and snorting. The hobo beams at us blearily. Good people, I would like nothing better than to speak to you of things spiritual, but alas, I seem to have run short of the ambrosia which inspires my visions. To demonstrate, the hobo upends an empty bottle of snake squeezins. The hobo looks at Lily expectantly. Lily decides to play along. Billy throws him a bottle of snake squeezins. Rosie stares with utter disbelief as the snake squeezins vanishes down his throat. The hobo smiles. His eyes glaze over and he burps. Beware the man who has lived longer than the wasteland. The oracle's eyes clear and he smiles drunkenly. Rosie, beaming, hands him a bottle of snake squeezins. The hobo's cheeks are redder than hers. The hobo guzzles snake squeezins the way an assault rifle gobbles bullets. His eyes glaze over and his voice deepens. Those who guard the past guard the secret to immortality. Varla holds out a bottle of snake squeezins for the hobo, which he quickly snatches. The snake squeezins vanish into the hobo faster than water evaporates in the desert. The hobo smiles quizzically. His eyes get a distant look and he burps. Trust the one born beneath the battlefield. Lily also gives him a bottle of snake squeezins, the last bottle we have. Snake squeezins lubricate the hobo's throat and loosen his mind to travel places unknown to the sane. Man before wife, save a life. This may sound like a lot of nonsense, but what's neat is I think they all actually foretell events that may happen during the course of the game. So it'll be neat to look back at these in hindsight. The next car over is the trading car. Being right next to the Hobo Oracle, it's no surprise as they're playing out of snake squeezins. But look at that. You can buy a fully assembled engine. Only five bills. Lily needs to include that engine in her report for high pool to draw focus away from that <laughs> Chinese-English incident. We now have an engine in tow. Billy shrieks. The next car has a $10 slot machine. Lily can't deny her pleading, pouting eyes. The twins rub noses for good luck, and Horny shakes it one time as Billy pulls the handle. Round and round and round she goes. Where she'll stop, nobody knows. The one-armed bandit strikes again. You lose. Bet you that's the Hobo Oracle's machine. The three tents, which Vorla notes is made out of asbestos, by the way, each have a guard posted out front. None of them seem to be interested in letting us in. Guarded tents makes Lily's job <laughs> difficult, but not impossible. She won't worry about it until we've talked with a head crusher in Quartz. The Gila Monitor is back. One Gila Monitor at 14 feet. Lily might have had a jack at that time if Varla hadn't riddled its hide with 9mm. What's in Lily's report so far? Billy's luck stinks, and nose rubbing doesn't help. You can buy fully assembled engines at the trading car. The Hobo Oracle has an amazing tolerance for snake squeezins. In fact, Lily would like to see exactly how much that hobo can put down. And the Brakeman has a message for the head crusher in Quartz. But Lily will need to install that engine first. What a sight. Four women dragging an engine across the desert. <laughs>